So let's talk briefly about the gas constant R. We've seen that we can measure pressure in various units, everything from bar and kilopascal and tor and PSI and all of those. And we've seen that we can measure volume in a few different units as well. We usually talk about liters, but it could be milliliters, cubic decimeters, anything like that. So while our pressure and volume units can have very uh, many different variations, uh, we usually also find that we well, we have to measure temperature in Kelvin, that's what we learned from Charles's law, and we generally will measure our amount of gas in terms of number of moles. But because of those different pressure and volume units, the gas constant R can appear to have many different values even though it always represents the same thing. So the value of R appears to change depending on the units of pressure and volume. And again, that comes back to the idea of units that if I have one dozen eggs and I have 12 individual eggs, I am really saying the same thing, even though the number one and the number 12 are different in terms of numeric value. That's because dozen has meaning and individual has meaning. It's the same thing with our pressure and volume units. This is another reminder why we should always be showing units in our calculations, because it's our first line of defense to understanding when we've made a mistake is dimensional analysis and units not working out. But if we talk about the units of the gas constant R, it's representing the same thing. It's a universal thing about gas behavior. And actually, it turns out molecular behavior in general, we just tend to associate it with gases first because that's our easiest way of looking at things. So it turns out that R can be 0 0.083145 liter bar per Kelvin per mole or 0 .8, uh, 0.082057 liter atmosphere per Kelvin per mole. We've changed bar and atmosphere, our measures uh, of pressure, that's going to change the value. We also find that R equals 8.3145 liter kilopascal per Kelvin per mole or cubic meter pascal per Kelvin per mole. And you'll now start to see that there is some kind of commonality here, and that really has to come with the metric system. Liters and meters cubed, well, there's a thousand of them there. Kilopascals, pascals, well, there's a thousand of them there. And so those two thousands kind of work together to give us the same number here. And you'll notice the same value here because we're again in metric units. When we're in the imperial units, that's when this number changes. But the last point I've really been trying to get across to you is that really we're trying to understand the energy content of a sample of a substance and how it's distributed which means the gas constant R is going to have a connection to energy as well. And it turns out that connection is 8.3145 joules per Kelvin per mole. So if we look very carefully, we see, well, per Kelvin per mole is the same in all of these. It's pressure times volume that equals energy. And this should make sense for us. We've all hopefully blown up a balloon. Most of us have at the very least. We know that takes energy, not only to stretch the elastic of the balloon itself, but to push the air out of the way. This idea that pressure and volume working together gives us energy is going to be an important aspect of thermodynamics and our next way of understanding how changes in energy content of a substance can be connected to changes in state.